continuing in the philosophy section of the material. What new insight has philosophy firmly established within society? Appeal to humanism and adjustment, the human being and individual adjustment. Appeal to humanism. What does the conceptual framework of humanism and adjustment have to offer us as a part of the whole? In humanism, in our modern society, is a pervasive philosophical perspective. Philosophers of the 1800s turned their attention to various aspects of human experience. The human being became the center of philosophic attention. The appeal to adjustment. In the 1900s, philosophy has taken two major directions. One tried to build a systematic picture of physical reality based upon scientific development to the other on an increasing concern about humanity. They are concerned with how we can survive in and adjust to our changing world. World Book Encyclopedia, page 351. In the 18 and 1900s brought the emphasis of the individual. It was the individual that experienced life, not the species as a whole. The focus had shifted. It was the individual that had to endure trauma and pain, not the species. It was the individual that loved and sang not the species. Sure, it was the species that created the choir, but without the uniqueness of each individual voice, the whole meant nothing. As such, it was the individual upon whom we centered our attention as we addressed the issues of racism, genderism, sexualism, genocide, capital punishment, assisted suicide, cloning, etc. Our efforts were being focused into what we had been drifting towards for thousands of years. The individual matters most. And in the spiritual context, the soul is the individual. Our attention encompassed more than the physical individual, however. Our attention focused in upon the essence of the individual. Religion seemed to be far ahead of science and philosophy in this regard, and in many ways still is. For thousands of years, religions held to the concept of the essence being non-physical. Science, after centuries of searching, appears to be heading in this direction. And philosophy seems to be on the verge of accepting this idea, if only as an idea or concept. What does the conceptual framework of humanism and adjustment imply about the universe within which we live? We have no idea what we will find within the far distant locations of space, but we can be fairly sure that we will not find total compatibility and agreement awaiting us. We have no reason to believe the universe will be waiting, awaiting us with open arms, acceptance, and utopian existence. If nothing else, we should have learned from religion, science, and philosophy that life runs rampant with change. 
Life is not an existence of pure pleasure. Life does not and has never exposed humanity to an existence of pure joy, happiness, and leisure. We have had to expand or expend sweat, tears, blood, and life itself to get to a time in history where it appears we are solidifying the importance of the individual. This is not to imply the rights and significance of the individual have been established as an absolute. It simply appears to be where we are headed. If this is where we are headed, history shows us we will be challenged over and over again regarding this perception. We've spilled our blood repeatedly in our refusal to let go of this idea. Blood has been sacrificed so often and in such great quantities that had the soil and water retained the blood, the surface of our planet would no longer be blue and brown as seen from space. Instead, the soil would be crimson and the waters would be bright red. In order to keep the appearance of the planet as it is rather than shades of red, we must remember, we must never forget, we must never pass off our unselfish sacrificing as an exercise in futility. We will again have the choice of being dominated or face conflict and violence. Will we give up what we worked to accomplish thinking that we are accepting something better? Will we attempt to hide the ugliness of our past in shame? We must never forget. We must never hide from our past. We must stand up and be proud of what we have overcome. We can learn from our past, but never reflect or relive it. Traumas abound. We must live in the ever-present and eternal now. The future is full of potential, depending on what we do with this present. Our past has made us what we are, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it is what we are that we will take with us into the far reaches of the universe. Our belief in the significance of the individual soul will be taken into space. The last step is to solidify this concept by raising the level of the individual to the level of the causative force herself, or what religions have called God. A level so idealistic and untouchable that no physical or abstract concept we encounter, will shake it. How do the concepts of humanism and adjustment reinforce the concept of panentheism? Both humanism, the person, being the center of philosophic attention and adjustment, and increasing concern about humanity, did not develop as a trend they evolved as offshoots of the direction we were historically taking as a species. I would add that humanism as a philosophy has allowed us to do so, but humanism as a philosophy exclusive to the negation of every other philosophical approach is not a good idea, especially if the center 
of one's philosophy be rooted in the concept of a causative force. It is the causative force that should be the center, not the human being per se. Philosophy is built upon reason and reason is not the primary element individuals within our species use as a base for their behavior. We are a visual creature. We react to what we see. Look out. Watch this. Let's see what happens if it doesn't look right. Look what's happened. Seeing is believing. We are also an intuitive creature. We react according to what we sense. That seems ludicrous. It doesn't feel right. It ought to be. I don't think so. I believe so. Have some faith in yourself. These two areas, seeing and believing, are simply science and religion, reason and philosophy, do not have the ability to replace or dominate what we see or what we believe. It may never reach the point of doing so due to the type of creature we are, and it is not being implied that it ever should. But reason can reinforce the two, if the fundamental principles religion and science have in common are placed upon the table of reason, then a solid model, a unified view of what it is we think we are and why we exist, can be built. This model could act as a beacon, a directional guide, a reference point, a stabilizing factor, a homing device, for us as we travel throughout the far reaches of space. And what is it that religion, science, and philosophy seem to either agree upon or are close to agreeing upon? Religion and science seem to agree we exist. And philosophy seems to agree this is a reasonable idea. Religion and science seem to agree others exist, and philosophy seems to agree this is a reasonable idea. Religion and science are close to agreeing the universe exists, is limited, is less than something beyond it, and philosophy seems to agree this is also a reasonable idea. The word that describes this flow is panentheism or all within a causative force. We are on the verge of being able to establish a unified view. Creation of such a view would represent the first primitive model philosophy intends to build. Although not in isolation. Religion and science have their parts. And it is this philosophy of humanism and adjustment, although not exclusive, that are continuing the process of pointing us in the direction of the significance of the individual soul as the basic principle of this model. What do humanism and adjustment reinforce about the significance of existence, life? Individual awareness becomes the basic building block of total awareness. Total awareness may be evolving from an infinite number of points within our universe as well as other universes. We may be only one of many locations for individual pieces of awareness, but nevertheless we are one such location 
and to this we can witness and testify too. For it is our experience. With this in mind, we must then examine what it is we have to offer reality and a greater reality should it exist. If humanism and adjustment are correct in pointing towards the significance of the individual, then perhaps we have to offer reality. Our universe is just such a perception. This may or may not be the case. There is, however, no denying the effort, sweat, and struggles. We have persevered in order to establish just such a concept within our society. In fact, this struggle has permeated every inch of our historical timeline to the point of being one of the most universal principles we, as individuals, have attempted to establish globally. The struggle to establish the essence of the individual as being the basic building block of existence and establish the right of the individual to fulfill their own purpose in life unimpeded. Are the number one and two fundamental principles for which we have consistently sacrificed our very lives, our very existence throughout history. It is not our lives we said were important, but rather the right to travel and journey through life unimpeded, free of the dominance of others, free to develop as we each individually saw fit to do. This drive through history was predicated upon the significance of life which we had not defined, extending into eternity. Since we could not compare the impact different life journeys had upon the abstract concept of eternity, we accept the concept of elevating all life onto a plane of equality. The evolution of the concept of equality is a natural outcome from an understanding of the impact we have upon eternity should eternity exist. The further our perception of impacting existence reached, the greater our resolve became to establish the value of the individual and with it the expectation we had regarding how the individual should be treated. We are now capable of making another leap regarding our potential impact upon eternity. God, the causative force. We are now capable of making the leap of understanding how life could be a form of abstraction interacting relationally with God or a causative force. How do humanism and adjustment help us understand what life is? Humanism and adjustment focuses on the individual. They imply that the individual is the basic component of life. The individual is the basic component of life, not the hand, foot, arm, leg, heart, or brain. Religion says the soul is the basic component of life. Science says awareness is the basic component of life. And what of philosophy? Philosophy says they are both correct. The philosophy of humanism centers around the individual and the philosophy of adjustment concerns itself with the well-being of the individual and helping it to adjust to change.
I would add in this, it is possible for those who cleave to a solely a humanistic philosophy and approach, neglect the realm of the soul. All three emphasize the individual. All three, that is science, religions, and philosophy, emphasize the essence of the individual, but these are expressed differently. Does uh, humanism as a philosophy seek to replace God? It seems to be on certain points where philosophy of humanism tends to neglect and reject the religious concept of the soul. This is a fallacy, I believe, and it certainly doesn't apply to a universal or a unified view or a universal philosophy such as expressed herein. All three emphasize pieces of awareness, but the focus tends to be specific and not universal. Components of total awareness, but it is not just religion, science, and philosophy that emphasize the essence. The awareness of the individual as the basic building block of total awareness which may well extend far beyond the confines of our physical universe. Can total awareness be conceived of? Some would say yes, in the form of a universal consciousness, or nirvana, or awakening, or enlightenment of some sort, cosmic consciousness, form of total awareness or a union with the divine as expressed in many traditions. It is not just religion, science, and philosophy that emphasize the essence, the awareness of the individual, total awareness, which may well extend far beyond the confines of our physical universe. Some enlightened individuals have claimed to travel beyond the confines of what we know as the physical universe into, perhaps, the invisible spiritual realms. The totality of our historical past from beginning to end has been one struggle after another to establish the right of the individual to be who they are, to travel unimpeded, to be free from domination, intimidation, abuse, and control others attempt to force upon them. Free spirits tend to long for this reality in our world, on our earth, but it seems far-fetched, seems almost unreachable considering the time that we're living in. We are not free from intimidation, abuse, domination, and control of others. Religion, science, and philosophy and human history point towards our obsession with our tenacity to establish 
our willingness to sacrifice our very lives for the rights of the individual and what do we see as the individual we see it as life we see it as an essence we see it as awareness consciousness itself we see it as a part or an emanation of a whole an image in short as a species we see it as panentheism or symbiotic panentheism specifically we may not want to call it that and we may not be willing to call it that but that is what it is we may be able to deny the words but we cannot deny the actions for after all actions speak louder than words and often God speaks to individuals within the depths of silence we understand what life is we just haven't put it into words we haven't put it into words because science religions and philosophy haven't agreed upon a vocabulary one of them must step forward and mediate the process this is the functional philosophy apparently it is time for, for philosophy to act What do humanism and adjustment have to offer us as individuals? We have developed an understanding of the importance of the individual. Perhaps too much to the neglect of religions. Humanity cannot replace God, nor can science. Scientism tends to think that it can, however, answer all of life's questions, but it has its limits. <clears throat> Any model we build must either accept the concept or deny the cause for which our blood has flowed throughout history. If one steps back, and looks at our history from a distance an interesting picture appears to unfold our existence appears to be built upon alternating layers of behavior one layer is composed of violence abuse egomania intimidation intolerance jealousy hate vengeance and self serving actions reinforcing themselves recycling to the point of generating a feeding frenzy of negative human behavior uh, the holy bible might attribute this to satan this behavior accelerates until it culminates with the development of such atrocious human behavior that it becomes unbearable to the mass of individual essences traveling through society what religion calls spirit spirits spirits in the material world When this occurs, the individual essences, which have been independently journeying and experiencing life, unite to overcome the force emerging as potential threat to the survival of the rights of the individual to travel life independently and unhindered by others. Perhaps more interdependently and independently 
in reality. This pulling together begins the closure of the layer of negativism and begins a layer of positive reinforcing the right of the individual to be unique and journey life in their own fashion. These layers appear to build upon each other but are not totally isolated from each other although they may appear as such in the physical. The good is filled with the bad as the good continues its progression through time. The bad grows and accelerates until it eventually dominates, at which point it becomes the layer of the bad, the bad or evil then continues its progression through time. During this segment of time, the good grows and accelerates until it eventually overcomes the bad. Overcome evil with good. It then becomes the layer of the good, and as the good continues its progression through time, the bad grows and accelerates until it eventually overcomes the good. This is the cycle. At this point, it becomes the layer of the bad, and as the bad continues its progression through time, but it is not the good and the bad that are at the heart of these cycles. It is the individual responsible for individual behavior. provided in their current form and level of development, they can distinguish between these two apparent opposites. Many unfortunately confuse good and evil. They call evil good and good evil, as did the prophet Isaiah proclaim. in the book of Isaiah chapter 5. Good and bad are not entities in and of themselves. The Bible may explain it as such. God and Satan respectively. They are terms we use to judge specific behavior. In essence, humanism and adjustment offer us, the individual, the burden of being responsible for our individual actions. What significance do humanism and adjustment have to offer us as a species? We have given blood, suffered trauma, been through abuse, lived through despair, endured pain, sickness, and disease. In order to establish the significance of the individual over the species, we have come too far, suffered too much to abandon what we have established, what we believe as a species, although we don't always agree. There are certain things we do and can agree and believe upon as a species, and what is it we believe as a species? We believe the species is not an entity, we believe the species is simply a summation of its individuals. We believe it is the individual who possess the soul, although some don't necessarily agree upon the concept of the soul in a religious fashion, perhaps we should. We believe the species is derived from the summation of individual parts. 
as is the human body. As an example, this is why philosophy in the 18 and 1900s turned its attention to humanism and adjustment. In the 1800s, the human being became the center of philosophic attention, perhaps too much attention to the neglect of spiritualities. And in the 1900s, philosophy became concerned with how we can survive in and adjust to our changing world. There is no denying the species is important. Most of us do not want to see the extinction of our species, but it is because we do not want to see the extinction of our species, or is it because we know once the species is extinct, there will be no humans left. What a nightmarish scenario. Perhaps it is not even the elimination of the last human that concerns us as much as the thought that all of what we have achieved through human suffering and effort will have been endured in vain and for no apparent reason or purpose. We are a species whose individual members, for the most part, have a strong sense of purpose. But whence and where does this come? We clutch to it, we pray for it, we endure it, we die for it. If one were to step back to overlook earth from a distance and focus in upon the individual struggles to maintain and perpetuate this sense of purpose and significance, one would undoubtedly feel great pride in the tenacity we display. While pride would swell up in one's heart, so would humor and laughter. Not the evil pride or the sinful pride that is one of the seven deadly sins according to some branches of Christianity, but the good type of pride. This would not be laughter at the pain, this would be laughter of pride for the individual humans would be seen for what they are. These individual humans are running around clutch, clutching a sense of significance and purpose. They are so sure they have, but which they have not even defined for themselves because they don't realize this is what they must do as a species. Define their own purpose, their own significance. What significance do humanism and adjustment have to offer other life forms in the universe? We develop philosophy. Philosophy does not develop on its own. We believe we are discovering truths, but truths are what we develop them to be. Truths are fundamental perceptions we develop through the process of religion, science, and reason. Humanism concentrated upon the individual. Adjustment concentrated upon finding understanding to help the individual survive and adjust to the changing world. Both orient around the individual. It appears our orientation is leaning towards the individual. This will be very significant to other life forms that may exist in the universe, i.e. the aliens. This direction logically leads to the recognition of all individuals as being significant, not just the human individual. 
whether we consciously or subconsciously understood the process of developing the significance of the individual over the species is not what is important nor what is being addressed within here, this material. What is being addressed is the concept. If we continue our present direction and reinforce this infant concept, we will be developing an expanded form of the Magna Carta or a universal philosophy. We will be establishing the recognition of the significance of the individual as a universal concept, not a human concept. It may well be that we find this concept to be unique to ourselves, but that in no way makes it less valid. In fact, that should actually reinforce the belief we have in our having a purpose a significance for existing. If we should turn out to be the only known life form capable of, willing to, establish the concept of all individuals, human or otherwise, having a higher order of purpose for existing, then we are unique amongst the life forms of the galaxy, the universe. We appear to have been working towards the establishment of the rights of the individual ever since we have ex existed as a species. This is a universal goal. It is not universal in the sense that it is being accorded by all life forms. Rather, it is a universal goal to establish a generic idea intended for all life forms, attempting to establish the significance of the individual reaches beyond our species and embraces all species, all life forms throughout our universe. In fact, it reaches beyond our universe and into the infinite other universes that may exist. We as a species have much to offer other life forms in our universe or otherwise. We have hope to offer all life as we step into the heavens.